Hello students, in this video, let us learn about electrical conductivity of semiconductors. We will specially try to analyze the dependence of electrical conductivity on temperature. So let us first analyze the dependence of electrical conductivity on temperature. I will ask you one question, what do you already know about this dependence between electrical conductivity and temperature? We have actually analyzed the dependence of sigma on T for metals, semiconductors and insulators. There we learned that as temperature increases, since more charge carriers are produced in a semiconductor, sigma will be higher. So in this class, we will be analyzing in detail the dependence of sigma on temperature based on the mathematical expressions that we have already obtained. So we know that in a semiconductor, there are two charge carriers, electrons and holes. So both of them are responsible for electrical conductivity in a semiconductor, especially in an intrinsic semiconductor. In an intrinsic semiconductor, concentration of electrons and holes are equal. So if I write the total conductivity in an intrinsic semiconductor, sigma i is equal to n e mu e plus p e mu h. This is the general equation for the conductivity of a semiconductor where n is the concentration or the charge carrier concentration of electron, p is the carrier concentration of holes, e is the charge, mu e is the mobility of electron and mu h is the mobility of holes. Now since in an intrinsic semiconductor n is equal to p equal to n i, I can rewrite this equation as n i e into mu e plus mu h. So in the last videos we were deriving the equation for n i and we have also analyzed the temperature dependence of mu on temperature dependence of mu. So let us try to understand the temperature dependence of sigma from this equation. So we have derived that the equation for intrinsic carrier concentration n i as n i equal to 2 into 2 pi k t by h square whole raised to 3 by 2 multiplied by m e star m h star whole raised to 3 by 4 into exponential minus e z by 2 k t. So this is the equation for Ni. Now substituting for Ni into the equation for conductivity sigma i, it can be obtained as sigma i equal to 2 into 2 pi kt by h square whole raised to 3 by 2 into me star m h star whole raised to 3 by 4 into exponential minus e g by 2 k t. So this is the equation for n i. Now the equation for sigma i will be multiplied by e into mu e plus mu h. Now let us analyze the temperature dependence of this equation. So you can see here temperature comes in many of the factors. For example here we have a t raised to 3 by 2 factor. Here in this exponential you have another temperature dependence and we also know that mu is also a temperature dependent quantity. We have learned that the temperature dependence of mu on temperature in the case of an intrinsic semiconductor at room temperature or at very high temperature it is mainly due to scattering of biphonons that is mu l was the factor determining mu at higher temperature for intrinsic semiconductor because there are no added impurities and at higher temperature the phonon scattering will be dominating and it is proportional to t raised to minus 3 by 2. So in the case of an intrinsic semiconductor at normal temperature at about room temperature this mu is a function of t raised to minus 3 by 2. So what will be the overall dependence of this sigma on temperature? As you can see, in the first term, t is proportional to 3 by 2. 
in the last term t is proportional to minus 3 by 2 so their effect will cancel out and the dependence of sigma on temperature will be due to this exponential term so i can take all the other terms as a pre exponential factor which is independent of temperature so i am going to rewrite this equation as sigma i equal to sigma i 0 into exponential minus eg by 2 kt here sigma i 0 is the all other terms which are approximately temperature independent which are 2 into 2 pi kt by h square whole ratio 3 by 2 then m e star m h star whole ratio 3 by 4 e into mu e plus mu h is the factor sigma i 0 now taking logarithm on both sides i can rewrite this equation as ln sigma i equal to ln sigma i 0 plus logarithm of exponential factor which is simply minus eg by 2 kt so this term it is practically independent of temperature and from this equation you can see that when t tends to infinity this term will be reduced to zero and in that case sigma i will tend to sigma i zero so this equation actually gives you the dependence of conductivity on temperature so if you plot a graph with log sigma i along y axis and 1 by t along x axis it will be a straight line with slope eg by 2k and it will have a y intercept of log sigma i 0 so you can see here this graph represent the intrinsic range here in this intrinsic range you can see, see it is a straight line its slope is eg by 2k or minus eg by 2k so that is why it is sloping downward negative slope means sloping downward so eg by 2k is its slope and if this is a graph of log sigma versus temperature so this is already known to us right in an intrinsic semiconductor we know as temperature increases conductivity increases because more charge carriers are produced so here temperature increases along the negative x direction because it is 1 by t now let us analyze the case of an extrinsic semiconductor how the conductivity of an extrinsic semiconductor varies with temperature so there we have defined the equation for the charge carrier concentration n in the case of an extrinsic semiconductor so let us type let us consider an n type semiconductor so here electron concentration n is root of n d into n c 2 pi m b star k t by h square whole ratio 3 by 2 into exponential minus of e c minus e d by 2 k t so i hope all these terms are clear for you ec is the lowest energy of conduction band ed is the donor level and other constants were explained in previous video so if this is n we know in an n-type semiconductor conduction is mainly due to electrons so its conductivity can be written as n e mu e we can neglect the contribution from holes so what will be the conductivity sigma e it will be root of nd into nc into 2 pi m e star kt by h square whole ratio 3 by 2 into exponential minus ec minus ed by 2 kt so this is n multiplied by e into mu e so what is the temperature dependence of this term here you can mainly see the temperature dependence in this exponential term so we know there is temperature dependence in this three exponential factors as well here it, it is t raised to 3 by 2 mu e is also temperature dependent and in the case of an extrinsic semiconductor at low temperature the scattering and the mobility is mainly due to impurities 
and the impurity factor is proportional to t raised to 3 by 2. So, as in the previous case, t raised to 3 by 2 will not get cancelled in an extrinsic semiconductor at low temperature. But even then, if temperature is very low, then this factor, this exponential factor will be determine, determining the temperature dependence. Because the temperature dependence of the other, fact, other factor is weak when compared to the exponential term. It will be decreasing and increasing more widely when temperature is varied at low temperature. So, we can effectively neglect the temperature dependence of this pre-exponential term and consider that the exponential term, the exponential term brings the temperature dependence here. So, when compared to this exponential term and its temperature dependence, the other terms have a weak dependence on temperature. So, writing that, we can write sigma e equal to sigma e0 which are the pre-exponential terms into exponential minus ec minus ed by 2kt. So, in your textbook just ed is written there. There they assume that ec minus ed is ed that is the energy range between conduction band and the donor level that they assume as ed. So, here we have written ec minus ed which is the difference between the conduction range and the donor level both are same. So, how this this equation depends on temperature? So, as you can see if you take logarithm log sigma e it is log sigma e 0 minus ec minus ed by 2 kt. So, if you plot a graph with log sigma along y axis and 1 by t along x axis, it will have a slope of ec minus ed by 2 k. So, it will have a negative slope that means it will slope downwards. So, let us plot that graph. Here in, in this picture, this is the extrinsic range. Here you can see it is a straight line log sigma versus 1 by t at low temperature and at extrinsic range where the intrinsic carrier concentration is very less compared to Nd. Here a straight line is obtained and its slope will be Ec minus Ed by 2k. So, you can see the slope is slightly lower than the intrinsic range. There Eg by 2k is the, sl is the slope, Eg is very high. Here Ec minus Ed by 2k is the slope, so slope is less. So this is how te temperature will affect the conductivity. In the intrinsic range, there is a sharp increase in conductivity. In the extrinsic range, there is a slight increase in conductivity with respect to temperature as temperature increases. So this is predictable from the model that we already know, right? We have said that the number of carriers depends on temperature. In an extrinsic semiconductor at low temperature, when temperature is increased from the donor level, electrons will start to move into the conduction band, increasing conductivity. Then after that, when an exhaustion temperature is reached, extrinsic exhaustion temperature is reached, there is no more further increase in N when temperature is increased. Then after that when temperature reaches very high level, there is sharp increase in number of electrons because now intrinsic carrier will start to contribute. We have analyzed that dependence of number of charge carriers on temperature. This graph is almost similar to that. Now let us also think about this exhaustion range. There is one particular range when no change in number of charge carriers is observed n approximately equal to nd what will happen if temperature is increased in that range so here in this picture we have plotted that dependence of log n versus temperature 1 by t we have got an impurity range where n will slightly increase with temperature we have an intrinsic range where n has a very large dependence on temperature 
and there is an impurity exhaustion range. So if temperature is increased in this range, impurity exhaustion range, we know scattering will start to happen. Phonon scattering will start to happen more. So there is a slight decrease in conductivity when temperature is increased in this range. So that is why in an intermediate temperature range, in the case of an extrinsic semiconductor, there we see a fall in conductivity. What is happening here? In this range, all the extrinsic carriers have contributed to conductivity. So N will not increase any further. But due to temperature, phonons will be scattering more number of electrons and the resistivity will be decreasing slightly. So this is how overall the conductivity will vary with temperature. Conductivity will generally increase with temperature in the case of, of an extrinsic carrier or an intrinsic carrier. In the case of an intrinsic carrier, it is just a straight line. In the case of an extrinsic carrier, we first see an increase in conductivity. So after reaching the exhaustion range, extrinsic exhaustion range, there is a slight decrease in conductivity with temperature. Then after that, the electrons from the valence band, the intrinsic electrons will start to increase, thus increasing the conductivity. So this is the plot of ln sigma i versus temperature. So in this class, we have analyzed the dependence of conductivity on temperature. I hope this portion is clear for you. Thank you.